morning to good morning student friends the gentleman of the jungle is authored by jemo kenyatta so let us see this short story today this short story that looks more like a fable is interesting not only because of its sense and asho but because of the personality of the author Jemo Kenyatta was a writer and a prominent politician anti-social activist and later the first become the first prime minister of new independent Kenya as a reader we should look at the fable more like at the political manifest than at another african fairy tale so here we use the term fable fable stands for the moral story with animals as the character on the contrary you could also see parable so parable stands for again a moral story with human beings as the characters but here in the entire story you could see animals as the characters so it is a fable the german gentleman of the jungle is heavily stylized to it and you could see the setting the setting is kenya on the east coast of africa and the author on the right hand you could see is jemo kenyatta who was born in the year 1897 and died on 22nd of august 1978 and the whole story should be understood as a symbol it is a symbolic representation which you could see so and there are two things which you could see here as a symbol that serves one is man so you could see only one man here in the entire story and he represents kikuyu people of kenya and there are number of animals which you could see in this story and all these animals represents the europeans and so when we just look at that quickly the title of this story is gentleman of the jungle which is written in the year 1938 and it is authored by jemo kenyatta and it belongs to the genre means type of writing a kind of writing that is short story born in kenya under british rule jemo kenyatta was a member of the kikuyu tribe and an anti colonial activist in the year 1952 he was charged with leading an uprising against the british which led to his imprisonment and exile after his release kenyatta governed kenya as its prime minister from 1963 and then he became its first president from 1964 until his death in the year 1978 because the whole story is a fable both its characters and some elements of the settings are symbols which help the author convey his message the man who lives in a hut and speaks in an african dialect is a symbol of all african people living under colonialism as the author is kenyan the man could also be specifically symbolic for the people of kenya under british rule the way the man is treated by the animals is symbolic of the author's perception that many african people were discriminated against and exploited by britishers and other western colonizers the man's final act at the end of the story what you could see is that setting the hut on fire with all the animals inside is symbolic for the colonization people who fought for independence from their colonizers by setting it on fire the man implicitly sacrifices the hut that he has built and this suggests that 
the narrator uses this act as a symbol to communicate to his readers that violence and sacrifice might be needed to escape the colonizers oppression so what is that violence the violence is what you could see setting the fire and making the whole thing churned up burnt up and the sacrifice is that the efforts which the man has put in to build the hut and this is what you could notice a final uh, part of the story where all a man builds a beautiful uh, hut and where all the animals gather there to occupy that when all the animals are there in and around that hut looking at the right opportunity the man sets fire so the whole story comes to a end of it so let us look into this in your textual perspective so in a detailed manner in the late 19th century the chief european powers divided africa among themselves they could do this because europeans arms were superior and became because the african chiefs did not understand the meaning of treaties they were asked to sign as a result africans lost the land they had traditionally lived in and cultivated so their attitude towards european expansion is made clear in the following fable which we could see this story which reflects the attitude of the kikuyan people of kenya towards european laws and commissions so this is what you could see in the picture kikuyu tribe of kenya and this is what the east coast of africa where the british occupied this kenya and this is what europeans expansion in east africa and how the people were brutally suppressed by the european powers now the story starts so you need to understand this story in the perspective of symbols here the man represents the people of kenya and the animal represents all european powers so the story begins like this once upon a time an elephant made a friendship with a man so here what you could say is that it stands for the european power and man stands for the kenya people so europeans made friendship with kenya this is how you need to understand this story okay so one day a heavy thunderstorm broke out the elephant went to his friend who had a little hut at the edge of the forest and said to him my dear good man will you please let me put my trunk inside your hut to keep it out of this torrential rain the man seeing what situation his friend was in replied my dear good elephant my hut is very small but there is a room for your trunk and myself please put your trunk in gently so what happens in the situation is that the man allowed the elephant to keep its trunk inside and in turn says to place the trunk inside his hut in a gentle manner not in a rough way the elephant thanked his friend saying you have done me a good deed and one day i shall return your kindness so it's an act of gratitude that's what a thing so it's how the elephant said by uh, thanking so but what followed as soon as the elephant put his trunk inside the hut slowly he pushed his head inside 
and finally flung the man out in the rain flung threw the man out that's what in the rain and then lay down comfortably inside his friend's hut so saying what he says my dear good friend your skin is harder than mine and as there is not enough room for both of us you have afforded to remain in the rain while i am protecting my delicate skin from the hail storm so this is how it wanted to keep his own action in a justified manner so then what happened the man seeing what his friend has done to him started to grumble the animals in the nearby forest heard the noise and he started shouting at the people elephant and the people hearing the noise of the man came there and came to see what was the matter all stood around listening to the heated argument between two people who are that the man and his friend the elephant in this turmoil so in that situation heated discussion lion came along roaring and said in a loud voice don't you all know that i am the king of the jungle how dare anyone disturb the peace of my kingdom so this is what lion said on hearing this the elephant who was of the high ministers in the jungle kingdom replied in a soothing voice and said my lord there is no disturbance of peace in your kingdom i have only been having a little discussion with my friend here as to the position of this little hut which was which is uh, yours lordship sees me occupying the lion who wanted to have peace and tranquility in his kingdom so he wanted to have cool and calm situation in his kingdom replied in a noble voice saying it i command my ministers to appoint a commission of inquiry to you go through into this matter and report accordingly he then turned to the man and said you have done well by establishing friendship with my people especially with a elephant who is one of my honorable ministers of state do not grumble any more your hut is not lost to you wait until the sitting of my imperial commission and there you will be given plenty of opportunity to state your case i'm sure that you will be pleased with the findings of the commission the man was very pleased by the sweet words from the king of the jungle and innocently waited there for his opportunity in the belief that naturally the hut would be returned to him so this is what a thing so the assurance of the lion made him to be happy with and he was waiting for the commission to be summoned and all the people gather and take a decision then what happens the elephant obeying the command of his master got busy with other ministers to appoint the commission of inquiry the following elders of the jungle were appointed to sit in the commission so who are those people mr rhinoceros mr buffalo mr alligator mr the right honored mr fox to act as the chairman and mr leopard to act as secretary to the commission so look at these animals and the chairman is a fox who is known for cunning okay on seeing the personal the man protested and asked if it was not necessary to include in his commission a member from his side because when you observe all the members are animals and he naturally wondered and he was anxious 
and he was worried in another way so that nobody is from his end, from his side. But he was told that it was impossible. Why it was impossible? Since no one from his side were well enough educated to understand the intricacy of the jungle law. So the animals say that the jungle law is entirely different and since all the people from the man are not so educated to understand the jungle law. Further, they, they were nothing to fear for the members of the commission were all men of repute for their impartiality in justice. And, and there were gentlemen chosen by God to look after the interest of race less adequately endowed with teeth and claws. He might rest assured that they would investigate the matter with the greatest care and report impartially. So he was assured, he was given a promise from all these people that the justice would be given. So he was looking for that, he was waiting for that justice in an impatient way. So this is what you could see in this picture. All the animals are gathered to discuss about the issue. What is the issue? The issue is elephant occupying the man's hut. And look at that, the position of man where he is sitting and all the animals where they are. So this is how you could see that this itself speaks of that how partiality plays an important role there. So there is no impartial decisions. So it is already judged, prejudged decisions which you could see in this story. So let us see that what happens in the next part of it. The commission sat to take the evidence. The right honored Mr. Elephant was first called. He came along with a superior air, brushing his tusk with a sapling which Mrs. Elephant has provided and in an authoritative voice said. So it came so in a superior complex, in a happy way, brushing his tusk. So with a sapling. The sapling was given by the wife that is Mrs. Elephant. So what the uh, Mr. Elephant says now, gentlemen of the jungle, there is no need for me to waste your valuable time in relating a story which I am sure you all know. I have always regarded it as my duty to protect the interest of my friends and this appears to have caused the misunderstanding between myself and my friend here. He invited me to save his hut from being blown away by a hurricane. As the hurricane has gained access owing to the unoccupied space in the hut. I considered it necessary in my friend's own interest to turn the undeveloped space to a more economic use by sitting in it myself, a duty which any of you would undoubtedly have performed with equal readiness in similar circumstances. So now the elephant gave its own justification for its action, saying that it would get destroyed in the heavy rain, a heavy uh, hurricane, heavy wind. So he is heavily weighted. When he goes there, he could, because of his weight and body, he could protect. So that is how he said and justified his action. Then what happened? After hearing right honored Mr. Elephant's conclusive evidence, the commission called Mr. Heine and other elders of the jungle. So look at that, all these people are animal again. So who are supported what Mr. Elephant had said. 
then they called the man who began to give his own account of the dispute but the commission cut him short saying my good man please confine yourself to relevant issues we have already heard the circumstances from various unbiased sources all we wish you to tell us is whether the underdeveloped space in your hut was occupied by anyone else before Mr. Elephant assumed his position. See, what happens is the man is not allowed to speak and he was not allowed to give the action which happened in the absence of all the animals. But the man began to say, no, what happened is that, no, but when he was about to say all that thing, so, but it's, it's a question of contrasting thing. So why it happened not? Why it is so? Why the negation? So we want to say that in a contrasting thing. So that is why we use the word, but the, but at the point, the commission declared that they had heard sufficient evidences from both sides and retired to consider the decision. After enjoying a delicious meal at the expense of right honored Mr. Elephant, they reached their verdict, called the man and declared as follows. What was that declaration? So that's what they enjoyed all the food and now they declared what is the thing. So from their own perspective, that's what I think. All the people are of the same category. They come to their own conclusion. In our opinion, this is what the judgment that is what that is being given. In our opinion, this dispute has risen through a regrettable misunderstanding due to the backwardness of your ideas. Your stands for here the man. And we consider that Mr. Elephant has fulfilled his sacred duty of protecting your interests. As it is clearly from your good that the space should be put to its most economic use and as you would yourself have not yet reached the stage of expansion which would enable you to fill it. We consider it necessary to arrange a compromise to suit both the parties. Mr. Elephant shall continue his occupation of your hut, but we give you permission to look for a site where you can build another hut more suited to your needs and we will see that you are well protected. So this is what the decision given. So what finally they decide that let this hut be possessed by elephant so owned by elephant let him take care of this hut let him be in that hut in turn the man would be given another place where he can build one more hut and for that he will be protected so what he has to do so this is what a thing so the judgment when before to be given so they have to listen to both the parties. But what has happened here is that, so it was not listened from both the parties. It was already decided. That is what the meaning of it. So they gave a biased decision. And the reason for this biased decision is all of them are animals of the same category. This is what you could notice the man having no alternative so this is a pitiable condition pitiable condition of the man so having no alternative and fear that his refusal might expose him to the teeth and claws of the members of the commission teeth and claws that is what a thing so you could see here very figuratively that is being uh, brought out the man is exposed to the teeth and claws of his uh, animals. So that means 
the animals may expose so may show their teeth and their claws the nails and the teeth through that what the animals will do they'll bite that's what he was afraid of the bitings of these animals so what he did then so they are afraid of the commission so that is what did as they suggested so he just carried on as suggested by these animals that means he took a new land and he constructed one more house there but no sooner had he built another hut than mr rhinosaurus charged it with his home horn lowered and ordered that man to quit so this is what the first time the hut was occupied by elephant the second time so when he constructed now it is time for rhinosaurus rhinosaurus went in and it occupied and the man is made to quit that place move away from that place a royal commission was again appointed to look into the matter the same findings was given so what has happened so in the first instance the same thing repeated so all the animals gather they come to a biased judgment this procedure was repeated so for so many times so which are the other animals that keep on occupying one after the other herds so which are those he'll say that this procedure was repeated until mr buffalo mr leopard mr hyena and the rest were all accommodated with new huts then the man decided that he must adopt an effective method of protection since commissions of inquiry did not seem to be of any use to him so that is what he said so when one action is not giving a fruitful result if we repeat the same action for several times it is a waste of time so what is to be done in turn for that he has to think of the alternative so when one action is a failure so we should not quit from that in turn we should not continue in the same way we need to change our methodology we need to change our approach so this is what you could see here since the commission of inquiry did not seem to be of any use to him so he sat down and said so this is what the african so what you can see that is kikuyu sounds the language which you could see is that eng nga ing di ding ga ga mathegi so which literally means there is nothing that treads on the earth that cannot be trapped so there is nothing that treads on earth where you can keep your foot on earth that cannot be trapped that cannot be utilized so you can utilize every part of this earth or in other words you can fool people for a time in a symbolic way what you can say is that you can fool a man for a time but not forever not always early one morning when the huts already occupied by jungle lords were all being to decay and fall to pieces he went out and built a bigger and better hut a little distance away from that place no sooner had mr rhinosaurus seen it now rhinosaurus saw that so that is what i think he has built a beautiful hut he came rushing in only to find that mr elephant was already inside so rhino felt that he is the first man but before that elephant is already inside there it's so in a sound sleep mr leopard next came in at the window mr lion mr fox and mr buffalo entered the doors while mr hyena hyena howled for a place in the shade so made a sound and he was in the shades there and mr alligator basked on the roof 
he was enjoying the sunny uh, shine sunshine that is basking so he was basked on the roof enjoying the sun rays presently they all began disputing about the rights of penetration each one was thinking that i am the first i am the first so and they were on the discussion and from disputing they came to fighting and while they were all embroiled together the man set the hut on fire and burnt it to the grounds jungle lords and all so when they were in a discussion he set a fire and so in the fire which engulfed all the animals along with that uh, hut churned up and become a dust then he went home saying so he thought and he said to himself that peace is costly but it is a worth that expense and lived happily ever after so this is what the story which you could see so if we want to understand the story from the different perspective let us look into that so a fable is a short story that typically features animals which are given human qualities here there are many animals which they have been mentioned in the story and they are all given a human quality so what is the human quality that has been given all the animals are made to speak all the animals are coming and interacting with man and they are sending him out and occupying his own property which he has built with great care and effort the fable wants to teach a moral lesson and often the moral is expressed explicitly at the end so you could see there is a moral story which that comes out from this so how so the effort of one man is enjoyed by somebody else so my efforts and its fruit i should enjoy but in turn i am putting effort and somebody is enjoying the fruit so this is what you could see this happened here the effort of man is one one part and the man's efforts fruit is enjoyed by animals famous fables some of the famous fables which you have seen in your school days are the tortoise and the hare the fox and the grapes remember those stories which happened so there the tortoise and the hare they are made to speak so like human beings and the fox is made to speak by looking at the grapes this is what these are the small stories which you could see there so they are the fables and aesop is known for his fables that's why they say normally aesop's fables the gentleman of the jungle is a philosophical tale whose characters are animals which you could see there so all the characters in this story are animals except only one person that is man and the main characters are which are those elephant a lion a buffalo an alligator a rhinoceros a leopard a hyena and a fox as well as only one man which you could see and to some of the whole story what you could notice is the gentleman of the jungle tells us the story of a man living alone in the jungle with many animals this man is fooled by an elephant that pretends to be his friend and a dispute begins therefore between them so he is at a outer world looks as a friend but at the true sense he is not a friend the lion king of the jungle offers the man 
the opportunity to state his case before a commission entirely composed of animals that commission was entirely composed of animals whose impartiality is consequently doubtful to such an extent that the elephant is declared innocent and the man has to give up his hut and build another hut at somewhere else the same scene happens again and again initially it is for the elephant then to the rhinos then to the so on and so forth all the other animals the man builds other huts which are successively confiscated by rhinoceros buffalo leopard a hyena and other animals so he decides to take extreme measures manages to gather all the animals together in a big hut then sets the hut on fire and burns it completely so much so that he finds himself alone in tranquil in a calm cool and soothing state having got rid of the cruel animals and being ready to enjoy a costly peace that's what he says the story finishes with a moral maxim as in every parable what is that peace is costly but it is worth the expense so what does it mean so this is what a key thing which we need to know that what it is when you are at peace that means you are not worrying about anything negative you focus on all the positive and that is all to get peace is very hard and comes with trials when you make it through the expense and finally have peace then you can say it was worth going through so this always remember that when we have anything so we will not know the value of it with a lot of effort and the what you can say sufferings when you attain it we come to know the value of it so that is what you could see here peace is costly but it is worth the expense what it has brought out the author has treated the themes of injustice so that is been done by all the animals to this man abuse of power so that is what are things so the power they have been taken and racism in a colorful simple and sober style but the moral is very clear and brilliant so all the known people their own group farmed and this man who is a original inhabitant of that land is been pushed aside so this is what a thing when you come to the title the gentleman of the jungle the gentleman of the jungle seems to be more advanced than a fable as it requires the reader to understand the intricacy of the language and its connotation in order to understand the moral lesson it is also a political fable as it raises controversial issues in modern society the title refers to british gentleman who always plays fair and who is just and has moral integrity so that is why he keeps on using mr mr mrs and so on and so forth the titles before the names of these animals the contrast between this and the jungle so the opposite ideas that's what we call it as a contrast between the jungle that is the forest and that of the people so the primitiveness and the lack of social and political development is beautifully brought out one is on the gentleman the other one is on the uh, what you can say the jungle so the implication here is an imbalance between the terms where 
one is superior and the other is inferior so and the one which seems to be superior at an outer look is very inferior in quality internally so whereas the one at an appearance of inferior that looks is truly very superior so what is that that is the people of kenya so this is what the whole poem symbolizes sorry the whole lesson symbolizes the short story that is the gentleman of the jungle so the back exercises and other grammatical aspects we will see all these things in the next class thank you for watching all these things thank you